The following what ifs are some of the most requested, but they do not provide much in the form of long form content. So let's rattle through these and put them to a figurative bed. Hey folks, Marsico X here. If you've been a viewer of our channel for a while, you probably know about the weekly roundtable live streams where myself, Sophie B and Haverock answer and react to all sorts of your ideas regarding the what's and the ifs of Dragon Ball's universe, as well as, of course, supporting the channel in this difficult and uncertain time. And for that, we must extend out a very big thank you to all of you out there, and we really do appreciate your continued support. We intend to plan to keep your ideas in mind and provide as much content in terms of stories as possible. We won't let you down. Okay, so what is this video exactly, Masako? Well, you see, it all stems from the first iteration that we did a while back. Last year, we made an FAQ video regarding the what-if scenarios that were asked the most often in these streams. You were really wanting to know what we thought of these stories, but sadly we felt that the changes that would have resulted to these stories as far as we could tell were either too minimal for a full video or series, or something that didn't really test the water in terms of character interactions or would be very compelling. Then we got asked even more questions, and we actually kind of slacked off with making a next one, but we have to admit. But don't you worry, we have got back to that, and here it is in all of its glory. The What If Roundtable FAQ Volume 2. So without any further ado, let's get this show on the road. And we are starting off with something that we do like the idea of, but it just doesn't quite cut the mustard in terms of a full fat series. Number 1. What if Chi Chi trained like Goku or was a Saiyan? Now, the model of so-and-so train like Goku is a tried and tested series on this channel, and it has provided good results. We will give you that. We have done that with Bulma, Yajirobe, and a little bit with the Ginyu Force and Broly. For this question, we have put these two sort of semi-similar scenarios into the same bucket, because the results are indeed pretty similar in the long run. They are just too close to one another to separate them out, so this one is sort of a twofer. If Chi Chi wasn't encumbered with her over-exaggerated, over-protectiveness and pseudo-realistic view on life and education, whilst living also in a very non-realistic mold, mind you, and was allowed to continue her martial arts training or somehow got turned into a Saiyan or was a Saiyan from the beginning without knowing it, her life might have actually been more enjoyable. Quite honestly, we would really welcome this change. Poor Chi Chi, she's had to deal with a lot. And it's something we talked about in our video on how she's able to cope with all of this. You can check that out up top. Chi Chi is an unfortunate case. She is the first big character who is suffering from what we like to call the wife syndrome. This is all too common in Dragon Ball and it all stems from Toriyama wanting to write a doe-eyed character, that was what we got when Chi Chi was really young, but then he admits to himself that nah this doesn't really work very well with his style, and so he reverted to the firecracker motif like we got in the 23rd tournament and onwards. Once she had fulfilled her function she got sidelined and we got what we see. In her case though, at least she has some fiery personality to follow it and to work with, and while her motives are in the long run understandable, the joke about her quickly gets old, much as the whole delinquent thing. It's something that's aged very poorly, and despite us getting older and understanding her better, it's still grating. If Chi Chi was still in a position of knowing martial arts from her time as a teen and practicing it herself on a regular basis, that would give her a hobby that would be in sync with her husband's and her children. She would still deeply care for Gohan's and Goten's education, any mother would want the best for their offspring, but she wouldn't put nearly as much stress and pressure on her firstborn as she did in the original. It was so overbearing to the point of being a caricature. To sum it up, she would be a much happier character, and those around her would be happier too, enjoying her company much more. Also, Gohan and Goten would be full-blooded Saiyans in the case of one of these scenarios, and not that her wishes are unreasonable, but we agree with so many of you out there that Chi Chi comes out as a character from a completely different story, not really fitting with the much wackier side of the dragon world. It does make you think about her mother though. Was she adopted by Ox King? Much like how Goku was with Grandpa Gohan? Hmm. Number two, what if Goku and Raditz went to Earth together? It's no secret, I think you already know. You know we love Raditz. After all, his what if was the big thing that kicked off the what if extravaganza on this channel, as well as spawning our R&R &R series to which you guys are very excited for the next episode. But many of you ask, what would happen if Kakarot and his brother landed at Grandpa Gohan's place, together? Oh, we get this one a lot. Well, for starters, we need to remember that Raditz is quite a bit older than Goku. They're not twins, remember? 
So with Kakarot either being unaware of his surroundings or not in a condition to fend for himself, his older brother would have to take charge, undoubtedly so. He would be the one in command. Also, Raditz would be aware of another thing. He'd be kind of happy to be out of Frieza's sphere of influence and away from the cantankerous aura of Prince Vegeta. Such a pest. The Saiyan would probably be pretty happy to start a new life on a planet where he would be able to overpower quite a large percentage of the populace. If not all of them, really, if things got bad. He doesn't want to take over the world per se right now. He's still a boy. But he feels confident that he and his brother aren't in any immediate danger. We even think that he wouldn't necessarily make Gohan just meet a very gruesome end, as he would have been a decent source of food on this new planet, and with how cautious Raditz always was, he would probably prefer to lay low instead of trying to directly take control over a planet and attract attention. Remember, Raditz is unlike most Saiyans in that instead of resorting to brute strength all the time, he is calculating and resourceful. He will assess the bigger picture, and so ensure his survival. Also, the older man might be able to put some reason under that hairy mane of his. Long story short, Raditz and Goku would, well, thrive on Earth. Probably no one would even go looking for them. Since Saiyans and the Freezer Force were so reliant on numbers and statistics, their low power levels would matter not in the grand scheme of things. And sure, Freezer's tyranny would probably go on and on amongst the galaxy, but the two Saiyans on Earth might even be quite happy with that, following Bulma and fulfilling the plot of the original Dragon Ball together. Keeping in mind that while Raditz was pretty cautious, his power as a kid was probably much smaller than his adult self, but still pretty good. Much like how Gine was in our What If on her. King Piccolo would be a bit of a challenge, allowing the sons of Bardot to unite against the threat and possibly put pay to him sooner than in the original. Even if Goku hadn't hit his head, we doubt that the two would turn evil, merely being a neutral option on the planet. They know Earth is and has been good to them, so why scorch it? Also, here's a bonus tidbit. What if Broly landed on Earth with Goku? Well, whichever Broly that would be, it isn't that important, as two Ozaru are living, ticking time bombs, especially with Super Broly's latent power. Sure, he might not be as strong without the bug juice of Vampa, but even though Grandpa Gohan could calm down a temper, two giant monkeys are still a big no-no. Number three, what if Piccolo had a son? While we do not deny our interest in tackling this topic one day in a bigger capacity, one must remember that Piccolo Jr. is still quite young for a Namekian even in Super. He's pretty much the same age chronologically as Gohan, despite showing wisdom beyond his years. As much as we'd love to see our favourite Big Green have something more to do in the show other than punching things really hard or looking all stoic and majestic as well as spouting exposition and seeing some more slug people around, it is safe to say that he is more than happy with his current surrogate family of Dende, Gohan, Videl and Pan. Granted, he knows that we will outlive them all, but for now he's content with his lot. But you have to keep in mind how long the Mechian lifespans are. We can expect that once his closest Saiyan and human friends are long gone, Piccolo will start to feel a little lonely, which may result in wanting to spawn offspring to either continue on his legacy or to have some company and distract him from the grueling struggle that is age. This, however, would force us to utilize things like the Dragon Ball Online timeline. You know, to not make it completely baseless, Toriyama did write for that game and there is a huge amount of content to tap into, as well as utilizing, that came from the man himself. I mean, why not? It's a fun concept, but we don't feel like it's applicable to the character for quite the foreseeable future. That being said, watch this space. Maybe one day we'll get to it. Number four, what if Goku landed at Kami's lookout or Beerus's planet? So while all of you guys want to see Goku be in the custody of a divine being, or as well as maybe Dr. Jiro for another bizarre reason, we just simply don't see it happening in a way that could constitute a what if series or be taken seriously. It's just not that practical. At least not in a way that has already been done by different YouTubers, to which I do encourage you to check those out. Let's face it, despite their experience and overall composed nature, neither Kami or Beerus are particularly paternal figures. At least not when we meet them. And yes, we know, Beerus does develop a soft side buller, but it took quite a bit of time, and he was sort of lumbered with her when you think about it. Both Kami and Whis would probably find a better caretaker for Goku, while keeping their eye on the young Saiyan from afar. Sort of like they're an odd curiosity, rather than being a caring guardian. Maybe our hero would get an earlier divine upbringing in this case, but we feel that initially they would merely be something as a notable distraction from the norm for any angelic being. Yes, this space child is different from the regular batch of people that they see, but they are just not cut out for caring for a mortal in that way, and they are fully aware of that. 
They know how to find said example though, and they would do just that. Kami would probably leave Goku with Gohan or some other surrogate family on Earth anyway, while Whis could just put him on any planet that could host him. Possibly even Yardrat. Again, if it was Yardrat or Namek, Goku would grow up to be a respectable defender of his surrogate people, but we don't think that he would have as many adventures as in the original. As we mentioned, he would remain a curiosity though, so you never know. Number 5. What if Gohan and Goten were twins or had a sister? Ah yes, Vulcan, I see you with these. This one gets answered a fair bit by this guy, so let's get to it. As we close this FAQ video, we do so with a return to the beginning, before Dragon Ball Z started, as we know it. If Chi Chi and Goku had twins, Gohan's character arc would be divided between the two, with one of the sons being more scholarly with the anger issues, while the other would be more carefree, one would be more into fighting and spending his time with his dad. If one of them was a girl or if they had a sister on top of that, she would probably be the one constantly butting heads with Chi Chi on wanting to fight and defy the classic female role that her mother is trying to enforce upon her. Remember, Dragon Ball was forged in the 80s where, like Calvin Harris once said, it was acceptable at the time. Such storytelling though would definitely add more conflict within the Sun family and introduce certain cases of favoritism from both Koku and Chi Chi. It's sort of like the opposite of our first what if that we talked about today. We have been also asked about the possibility of Goku and Chi Chi having seven children to go with the whole seven Dragon Balls motif, but we don't really think that Ox King's pantry or bank assets are nearly full enough for that. Also, in the end, if Goku had to raise his son or sons on his own, we believe that he would do everything in his might to try and do his best. And while he's not the most competent dad, his well-meaning nature and help from his friends would see him succeed in providing his progeny a happy childhood. I know you guys want to see him fail in some kind of way that is mostly comedic, but remember, Goku has plenty of friends who would aid him and gladly do so. So that's it for volume two. We will do everything in our might to make these a little bit more often, though we will try and possibly address multiple points in future videos together. As many of them are pretty similar to one another and can be dealt with in one go. I hope you are satisfied with this one. And if you are fans of our What If streams or videos, we strongly urge you to check out the first part, as well as to leave your questions in this comment. We do read these, even though it does take some time to get through them all. Stay excellent, everyone, and stay tuned for more. Catch you later.